Hello, everyone. My name is Charles Davis, and I want to welcome you to the God Principles. This is a very special video because I am talking to Mr. Thomas Gilstrap. Thomas, introduce yourself and tell them who you are. Hey, yeah, I'm Thomas Gilstrap, uh, you know, originally from Atlanta, uh, Georgia, north of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, well, north of Atlanta, I'm sorry. Uh, been here, you know, uh, I'm married you know, with kids, uh, been here in the Philippines roughly about permanently, you know, 10 years on and off. So Can you, how did you first get here? So how I first got here, let me, let me just say this. My, my father's a military man. He was a Marine. My father served two tours in Vietnam, uh, back in the day. I was okay. a small, small, small boy. And, um, Never even knew about the Philippines until my father came home from from service, and he would always talk to his friends and uh, brothers and my and my mom about his escapades uh, in the Philippines. He was stationed Ooh. in he was actually stationed in Manila before he was transferred to Cam, uh, Cambodia. All right. Okay. So so back in the day, he was part of the uh, um, Black Hawk. Uh, division where he was uh, one of the gunners on the uh, helicopters and um, oh, no Black Hawk Black Hawk car helicopters. Yeah, well, it was back then. It was a Huey. They they they, okay. they call him the Huey, the Huey helicopter, which then okay. turned to what? Okay. What they call the Black Hawk now? Yeah, um, yeah, okay. So yeah, he back in the day in the, in Vietnam, it was the, it was a Huey helicopter where oh, he was he was, he was a part gunner. of that. Yeah, he was That's part of you know, he was a gunner on the Huey. Yeah, apocalypse and, now. And, That's what that is. Exactly, apocalypse <laughs> now. And and um, yeah, he so he was stationed in Manila uh, for a while. Then he was transferred down to Cambodia. But when he came home, he would always talk about how beautiful it was in the Philippines and how the people were very nice to him, very cordial, wow. respect you know respectful and. You know, that's the first time I even heard. I was a little, a little kid. I said, I heard about the name Philippines. What brought me to the Philippines over 10 years ago, um, back in 20, 2002, I was on a project with um, the U.S. government. And we were supposed to come out here and digitize the VA hospital here in Cebu. Oh, okay. So that's how I first learned about uh, Cebu, man. I mean, I mean, Philippines at all. I mean, I I heard about it, but I never been. So that was my first experience in 2002, coming out and uh, starting this project. And then from 2002 to 2005, I was involved in this project with the VA hospital and uh, trying to uh, modernize the VA hospital. You know, bring it from okay. an old dinosaur paper based system to a more digitized system. Um, so that's how I got started. That's how I learned about the Philippines. Then I actually met um, Rose online through mutual friends, you know, and because um, I never did the dating, never, never did dating services, dating web, web apps, anything like that. Um, wasn't even into it. And uh, but I, I actually had friends I had, I had met when my when I was here working, met those friends, and then somehow met Rose through some of those friends. And um, so that's how it all started. And I ended up, you know, being in a state, communicating with her through, you know, what, at that time it was, uh, shoot, man, I was out at Friendster. Before, before Facebook, there was a thing called Friendster. Uh, okay. There was an app called Friendster. Then Facebook, you know, uh, became popular. So we just communicated back and forth um, on Facebook until I actually got another project overseas. This was for a um, company out in Taiwan. So I said, I figured, well, Taiwan is close to the Philippines, you know, close to Cebu. <laughs> so, you know, I said, yeah. save them a little money. You know, I end up getting a little place here in um, Cebu, uh, northern Cebu, and stayed here and worked remotely until I had to fly to uh, Taipei uh, okay. to, to, you know, to service my client. 
And, I mean, that's how it all worked out. I mean, end up coming here and, you know, fall in love with the culture, the lifestyle, the weather, maybe, mm-hmm. most of the weather, because I'm tired of cold weather. So I said to myself, you, you know, this would be an ideal place for me. Plus, I'm an outdoors type person. I love to fish. You know, um, I love to cook. So I yeah. just said to myself, maybe, you know, I could bring my experience um, from the U.S. to here. So what I did was I put Rose through culinary school here in uh, Cebu. Oh, really? And yeah, yeah. I put her through school. She graduated. And she, the funny thing is, she, I, when I was back in the States, you know, I asked her when she graduated, I said, well, what do you want to do with with your cooking, you know, because that's something we had in common, right? Uh-huh. I love to cook, and then I found out that's what she wanted to do. She liked cooking. So I asked her, when you graduate, what do you want to do? What do you want to open up? She goes, oh, I want to open up a bakery. Now, I thought about that when she said, uh-huh. you know, I want to open up a bakery. I said, wait a minute. I don't, I've been to your hometown, I believe, before. I mean, I think I saw about 10 bakeries <laughs> within, within a kilometer right. of each other. You know, I, yeah. I said... So I said, how how are you going, you know, you know, scratch the surface on that competition? I mean, mm-hmm. you you would have to bake the best bread in it. <laughs> so yeah. I told her, I don't, I don't, I told her, look, that that might be something you don't you don't want to venture down a bakery. I said, there's too many bakeries in your small uh, province now as it is. You know, I told her, you know, this thing about doing something else, right? So okay. she was like, okay, you know, what do you think? I could do. I said, well, you know, I have a, you know, pizza background, you know. Uh, Come on, Tom. Italian tell these background. people what your real background is. Come on. I've been waiting yeah. for this. This is well, like, I, oh, my goodness. Well, you know, I, I, you know, my, uh, you know, my, my, um, my family on my, on my mother's side, right? So I have a pretty, I have a pretty famous um, aunt. Adele Stoudemire, you know, she's down, she's from uh, Southern Georgia, Statesboro, Georgia. Uh, she actually went to Chicago, all right, and yeah. actually started started working in uh, Pizza Uno. Years, we're talking about back in the day. Pizza oh, Uno, one of ladies and uh, gentlemen, Pizza Uno is famous in Chicago. That is a famous pizza brand even to this day. And when yeah. I heard that he had brought the recipes here and his wife was was supplying fast food. I knew I was supposed to be here. Now go ahead, Thomas. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Cause I'm like that. When I found you yeah. all out, it's like, thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have yeah. to miss Chicago food. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's you know, it was just one of those um it, it was one of those, you know, moments in time where, you know, I started thinking because I haven't made pizza in a long time before, you know, getting Rose, you know, through the cooking school, getting her involved with food. It's been a while. Now, I made pizza for friends and family. Matter of fact, she could tell you the story where I was selling pizzas out of my trunk of my car. I mean, back in a, back in Atlanta uh, for, you know, just trying to crack my recipe into into the community. And friends always was asking me, hey, man, we're having to get together. Can you throw some of those deep dishes uh, our way? And I was like, yeah, you know, sure, no problem. So I've always been involved with the pizza. It's just that I was also working um, a full-time job. So the pizza was just a side thing, a side gig for me. And so meeting Rose, knowing that she's interested in food, I just threw that idea to, you know, in her head was like, well, here's what I'm going to do. When I fly out to Cebu, you know, my next vacation, we're going to sit down and I'm going to teach you the ropes. I'm going to teach you how to prepare a deep dish, how to make the dough, uh, how to uh, uh, season the meats, the ingredients, how to make the sauce. Because the, the thing about sh- Chicago deep dish, you know, it's a, I mean, it's a, man, it, it, it's like a um, lifestyle in Chicago, right? Yeah. You have, mm-hmm. you know, if you, you, if you haven't been into, you haven't visited Chicago fully unless you dived into a deep dish pot. So yeah. you know New York has the New York has that thin crust. Chicago has that thick deep dish. You know, so it's it's the pride, it's the pride of Chicago. Yeah. So it takes. You know, there's Rose now. 
Come on hey, down. Go on your email and you you don't have a link. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yes. So. Does. Yeah, you should have a link from Charles. Wait a minute. I'll send it. Go ahead. Keep talking. But yeah, so I I ended up, you know, teaching her how to make dough, how to ferment the dough, teaching her about the different, teaching her about the different, uh, the meats that would go on it, how to season the meat, prepare the meat, because Uh deep dish is not like thin crust. Thin crust, you know, the baking time is what? 10, 10 to 12 minutes. Deep dish takes about 35, 40 minutes to bake. So you had to have the right equipment. So I went out and bought mixers, uh, commercial ovens uh, for her to to get started with that. And um, she commercial opened up. Commercial ovens? Commercial ones? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Wow. We uh, went out and got a commercial oven. We started out small. We started out up in Bugu, northern Cebu. We was up there for about three years, and we uh-huh. just took over that town. We, we took over that town when it came to pizza. Um Everybody was was buying our pizza, talking about our pizza, and um, wow. So she got tired of Boog- the Bugu life, the province life, and wanted to move to the city. Ooh, so okay. I end up meeting some of the brothers here. Uh, I think the first brother I met here was Robbie. Met him at Gasano. Uh, Gasano Grand Mall. Gasano Grand Mall. Met him. He said he introduced me to more brothers. I had no idea that it was a big black male community here right that was here before me that was already established uh so i met up with these guys and it just took off from there you know they introduced me to lapu lapu city told me this is a place to be yep. if you're a black man this is yep. the place to be because of the culture because of the lifestyle here in lapu lapu um so I, I i set up shop here in 2015. We we moved from so, Bugu to Lapu Lapu in 2015. So so Thomas, you talked about a digital client. Tell people what you really do, because that's one of the things that that my audience wants yeah. to know is, what do you do to make money so that you can live this fabulous lifestyle? Okay, so so I am um, an implement. I, I'm an engineer, implementation engineer for the healthcare industry. So I, I, I actually work on databases. I actually uh, create um, training material. I, I mainly work with uh, hospital administrators, uh, doctors, nurses, PAs, you name it. Uh, anything that has to do with a healthcare facility, you know, I, I communicate technology for uh, the healthcare um, providers. Uh, so what I do on a daily basis. For the government? Basis. For, for the government? Well, not, I used to. So now I don't work for the government. Now I work for private entities. Um, I've worked for McKesson Corporation. I've worked for uh, the Clinical Works. I've worked for uh, Greater Memorial Hospital. I've worked for, gosh, who else? Oh, NetSol. was with NetSol for about 12 years. A uh, small um, laboratory um how can I say it? A laboratory software company where uh, we created um, an LIS software for about 100 laboratory pathology labor- laboratories across the U.S. and Canada. Uh-huh. Uh, so, so that's what I do. I'm just a, I'm a healthcare IT engineer, basically. Uh, so basically, you're developing healthcare applications. Yeah, applications mostly. Application database. I'm I'm Google certified, you know, uh, for for uh, application design, creation. So you know, I have uh, a few certification. Project management. I'm right now working on my. Um, what, what am I working on? I'm working on so much stuff, man. Uh, I'm working on right now. Uh, I can't even think. Account management. Done that. So there's. I'm trying to think. My mind. You got to excuse me. My brain is that's is right. sometimes. Hey, ladies not, and gentlemen, but, just so you know how much we care about what we do, it is midnight here in the Philippines, and that's when we're recording this video. So we've been up all yeah. day. This is my second interview. I had one earlier. You know, I live that digital nomad lifestyle, so I work, I sleep, I play, and it, it all goes with the flow. 
we're living a healthy lifestyle. That's one yeah. of the things about the God principles is we're about how to live a healthy lifestyle because that American lifestyle just will put you in your grave. Let's just keep it real. I mean, having to get up when you say, we demand that you be here. We demand that you put, uh-uh, no, that's not living. That's not. But anyway, <laughs> don't let me get off my soapbox. <laughs> so anyway. No, you're true. No, right. everything you're saying, yeah, no, everything you're saying is, 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 is very true. You know, uh, the thing is, you know, my family back at home and friends know where I'm at. You know, they're, they're living they're living their awes through me, right? When I take pictures oh, okay. and post them, you know, mm -hmm. when I when I tell where I've been, places I've gone, you know, like my uncles today, you know, uh, two of my uncles, great uncles are, are dying to get here. They're wow. dying to come here and experience um, what, experience the lifestyle, the culture of the Philippines. Now, neither one of them has ever been on a plane uh, more than two hours. So, but they are, they, they travel. So both my uncles love cruises, right? Uh -huh. You tell them to get on a boat, they're there. They, you know, Alaskan cruises, Jamaican cruises, Caribbean, they've been, they get on a boat, right? So, uh -huh. but when it comes to playing over water, a big body of water, we're talking about flying over the Atlantic or flying over the Pacific. They've never done that. So that's something that's going to be new for them. And I warn them now, letting them know, that 22 hour plane ride is no joke, right? When you're first oh, doing it, that's, hey, woo. Yeah, that's something you're gonna have to get used to. Uh, and I told him, don't try to come here for just a week because you're gonna be yeah. spending three days just recuperating from jet lag. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, make sure you come here with enough time for you to chill and then, you know, try to enjoy a little of the, uh, uh, the Philippine culture. Right. You know. Did you see if Ro, I, I sent her an email with a link she said to join. Yeah, well, you know, well, she can just pull up a yeah, chair she, right behind you. Yeah, she she can. Rose, move those over there for me. Um, I was showing Charles. He he had mentioned ugly stick, and I told him I, I just you know I got <laughs> you know just now. But he said he sent you it on your email. Check it. Now you can go in there and join it. Just click the link, and he's gonna let you in. They yeah. They he's it's fine. It's fine. She gonna try to join it from there because she got the oh. baby. She got the little baby. Okay, okay. Yeah. You know, you know, that's one of the things I, I do. You know, if you've seen on Facebook, setting up a a podcast studio to do these kind of videos, and also I'm in digital marketing, and I've been a Unix engineer since Unix came yeah. out out of Unix Software Lab. So. You know, that's the other part of our conversation. It's like, oh, he's a techie like me. Okay, we got a common language. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Uh, it, it, it's provided, It's. I mean, it's been a good ride for me, you know, um, since I, I've been in healthcare IT for 20 years. And, and when I say that, people look at me and be like, what, 20 years? How old are you? You don't, you, you, mean, you know, and, and sometimes yeah. I tell my age, right? You know, when, I, when I'm talking about, uh, George Jefferson, or when I'm talking, <laughs> when, I, when, when I'm talking about the, uh, uh, yeah, man, when I'm, you know, when I'm talking about George, different strokes, I'm talking, because oh, these, these, yeah, these are shows that, these are shows I grew up on, right? So people yeah. like, oh, you remember that? Like, Hello, yeah, so Rose. How are you? Hey, remember me? You remember bringing my food? Hey. Yes, love you. What? <laughs> this is fabulous. A family affair. All right. Yeah, so those are my, that's my youngest one. Uh, Kayla is the four month old. She just turned four months two days ago. Uh, yeah. Wait, how many days? Uh, seven days ago, she turned. Uh, four months and then I have Deja. She's three, she'll be four in uh, September. So mm -hmm. th four months and four years almost. I remember Rose came over here a few days before she went into labor. She was standing, I say, how much longer you got to carry that baby? She said, any time now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, that's, that's the, the uh -oh, funny thing about. Okay, don't worry. Yeah, see, that's the, 
that's the funny thing about this 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 pregnancy and this delivery is that Deja was actually right on time. Deja was early. Matter of fact, Deja was like a week early uh, from her due date. Deja came right out. She's like me. Um, came out. The doctor had to spank, you know, had to spank her butt because she wouldn't cry. And uh-huh. when I was born, I told Rose the same stories. You know, when I came out, my mom said the doctor had to do the same thing to me because I wasn't. I just wouldn't uh-huh. cry. I was. I came out. My mom said I came out clenching my fist to my mouth like this, and the doctor's uh-huh. like, "Well, we have to spank her butt. She's alive." So okay. But yeah, Kayla. Kayla was right on. The exactly due date. She came on a due date. Um, um, Rose, could you switch your orientation to? It says you're in portrait mode. Could you switch it to landscape? That's why we're having a problem recording this. Yeah, try to switch your to landscape, Rose. Can you hear me? You don't have a good oh. connection. What 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 network are you on? What network what network are you connected to? Well, come in here. Come in here and sit in the chair. Well, come in here and sit in the chair. Just come inside the office and sit right. in the chair. Yeah, maybe it'll get better. Yeah. Because I have, uh, you know, in my in my house here, I have three, four networks. I have two networks huh? for my job, for my job alone, two? and then they have their own. Yeah, I have two for for them um, to do whatever they want to do. So they don't they don't interfere with my my network for work because I have a separate yeah. router for work. Yeah. Really. Yeah, I set so, up a different. So... I'm on a I'm on a totally separate router. Okay, so who are you using as your internet service provider? The only one here is Converge. I hate Converge, but I have no choice. Shut the door. No, I got both of them. Converge and PLDT. Oh, okay. well, Globe. yeah, PLDT. Yeah, so, so I prefer Globe because Globe, to me, before I moved to Bayswater, I was living in the Villas Magliones. And I was able to get Globe um, fiber. And I never, Ooh. not one day, had an outage with Globe. Never. And it was fast. Okay. And it was reliable. I actually, and, and what happened was when we moved here, and this would, could have been the, the relationship, Carla, with me and Bayswater, if I knew before I moved to that Globe was not offering services in Bayswater, I probably wouldn't have moved here. I was back in the States and Rose found this place while I was in the States. Uh-huh. For, and and when I came back, I had no choice. We had already moved here. So so it was one of those situations like, man, no globe? What 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 about uh 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 Elon Musk thing? Have you tried that yet? Oh yeah, the Elon. satellite. So yeah. so I'm thinking That's about like... trying that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. about trying that. Um there's a couple people that I know who has it and they say it works good, but see, I want to make sure that it's enough bandwidth, even on the cloudy days like today, where it's still a consistent, a consistent connection for me to do what I do. Cause I do a lot of technical um, assignments for, for clients. And I, I need to make sure that I don't lose any type of connection, especially when I'm right. doing video when I'm doing video calls with clients, I don't yep. want to have any issues when it comes yep. to, to, to that. So I want to make sure that's an option for me. Uh, you know, especially on days like this, that's been raining every day, all day here. Yeah. It's, yep. ooh, yeah, it's been raining a lot. Just, so just don't let the power go out, please. Woo. See the power is another <laughs> thing. You know, that's my other problem is, is a lot of these br- brownouts here. If there's a lightning storm or thunder, there's chances are the power guard, like last Sunday, right? Yeah. It was out for an hour yeah. and a half. Now, yeah. I have a generator, but... You do? Yeah, yeah. I, I have a generator, but I, I haven't, you know... If it gets to the point where we get, like, some type of major storm that knocks... You remember that typhoon that knocked everything out here? Um, if it's something terrible like that happened... 
Yeah, I have to fire that thing up. I have Ooh, to fire that okay. generator up. But and, and that's the reason why we got a generator because of that of that typhoon, and we was without we was without electricity for thirty days. You know, okay. who wants to be without let, electricity? Let Rose come days? on camera. Let let Rose come on camera because we we we're at the twenty five minute oh, mark. Oh, your I want to get a, a link uh, so you can join remotely. Just, just, so she can uh, because wait, let me see. I, because let me see if I can. Right, right. There you go. That's all you gotta do. Uh, let's see if I can put you in here. All right. Good. So there Hello, we go. Rose, how are you? Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> Introduce yourself to the audience. We're recording for the Guide Principles on YouTube. Tell the people who you are and how long you've been with. Thomas, and give us some suggestions. Uh, yeah, I'm Rose. Um, we've been together for 11, 12 years. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> she wants to be in the Come here. Come with daddy. So you can That's be in the camera. Too. Put her on camera. <laughs> you know tell tell camera. I want to talk to her. Oh, here, my friend wants to talk to you. He says well, he wants to say hello to you. Come on. No. Go say hi. No. Yeah, uh, she's shy. <laughs> normally, no, normally she's a camera girl. Normally she's all in the camera. You know, she yeah. wants to be in the camera, but today she's 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 in her little mood. So you know, hey. when she gets in those little moods, I just I just let her be. Yeah. Like right yeah. now she's under the desk. Don't do that. Don't do that. But yeah, so Rose said about what, twelve years? Sometimes yeah. I can't keep count mm -hmm. uh, of how long because the, 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 the years the days go by quicker, the years go by <laughs> the fastest and next, before you know it, it's been years done passed by and you're thinking, It's been that long? Gosh. That long, huh? We yeah, all made it past the ten. In America if you know the, the benchmark is if you made it past ten years, you're probably gonna make it all the way. How lo how hard was those first ten years? <laughs> so uh -oh, for me, you know, she over there laughing now. <laughs> you know, you know, for me, yeah. So so for me, ten years. How hard was it? Mm. I mean it. I mean it's it's been a roller coaster. I would say, mm. you know, starting out, you know, it, up and down, up and down, mainly because of the distance starting out okay. and and working and then finding just finding a groove finding a groove because when you first start out especially when you're you're dealing with a relationship outside of your own culture um, and that's what that's what my family friends ask me all the time you know how how difficult was it to adapt to their culture you know adapt to that philippine culture and um and I tell people on an honest on an honest note, it it was a little difficult starting out. Not not because of Rose or her, you know, not because of Rose, but mainly trying to adapt to the culture, trying to understand the the Filipino culture, understand you know how a relationship is built with a Filipino. Uh, so. That was that was one of the situations. Exactly. Plus, you know, I mean, that was the hardest. That was the hardest hurdle for me, was was adapting to the culture. Meaning, if you're gonna come here and live, you you have to really accept a lot of things you're not used to accepting, right? What was the hardest and, thing for you? So the hardest thing for me to accept, starting out was. Um, and I, I talk about this uh, so many times, but the convenience, having the convenience of being able to go out, let's say go into a store and just be able to shop in one venue. Here, back in the States, I can go to a grocery store. For instance, I can go to, I can go to Costco and buy everything I need for the house. Okay. Here, here, you have to go to multiple venues to find one thing. 
And <laughs> sir, sir, out of stock. Sorry, sir, out of stock. Sorry, sir, out oh. of stock. So that's what I really had to really adjust to. That type of of um, conveniency that's that's lacking. So uh-huh. that was a problem for me starting out. Starting out. Asia. So Rose, what was the problem for you? Dealing with him. What did you have to adjust to? Oh. Um well not much, but he just like, you know, complain like stuff like that. Like, you know about complain not about. having stuff, like oh, yeah. why and I can't answer <laughs> Like it's just how people work here. That's just how it is. Yeah, I mean I can go deep into it which if you tell you go, me, if you wanna if you wanna know there that that's just that's just the tip of the ice pack. Hey, I mean I learned I, when I came here it dawned on me it's like forget everything you knew. You're about to re- learn a new definition of patience. And yep. go with the flow. That's it. If you yeah, go someplace thinking it's go with the flow, it's easier on you. Yeah, that patience, that word is that that's a very good word, patience, because yep. When I came here, two months after I been here, I was I was we was hit with um Yeah. High end, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, it was, typhoon. Um, it was a Category it Five typhoon, Ooh. and we was living up in Northern Cebu, and it totally crippled, crippled Northern Cebu for two months, at least two months. And we was okay. without power for we was without power for over thirty days. And you gotta understand, that was the I was only here two months into my project with my company I was working for, Ooh. building a database for my Taiwanese client and two months after I arrived here we uh, got hit with that typhoon and no power no no electricity the roof was blown off tore off of the house that no that I was renting no internet so I was I was devastated you know my job understood what was going on what happened and uh, you know they were saying well just Get, stay safe, get yourself together, and um, let us know when you're back online. Okay. So it would have been easy for me to, in Georgia, if a major tornado rolls through town, your electricity is back up within a matter of hours. Yeah. They give you at least 48 hours, and everything is they're gonna have they're gonna have your 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 power back online within 48 hours. What I had to adapt to here and is just that. the ATM. Yeah, you know, the slowness of service, you know, when, when service goes out, just how there's doesn't seem to be an emergency to get to get everybody back online, you know. Um, so that's one thing I had to deal with. Um, the other thing would have been to uh, just ATMs. I don't know if you've been stood into an ATM line here in the Philippines. I had to adapt to that culture. Standing in line, you being the second person from the ATM, but the person in front of you uh, has about 10 transactions they need to do for the entire family. <laughs> no kidding. Oh, thank man, you. I'm not doing man, that one. I'm not doing it. <laughs> man, look, Filipinos that's looking at your viewing your podcast, they going to tell the truth. They have to tell the truth and say, you know what? Tom is right. That that is true. Tom Tom is dead on with that because I know they get frustrated too, especially when you're in a hurry and all you need to grab is a thousand peso just to go and grab some right quick, and the person in front of you is is doing ten transactions and they're at that internet they're at that ATM for twenty minutes, twenty minutes. Wow. And they don't they don't care that you are behind them and that you're in a hurry. They are going to sit there. They're going to get what they, they're going to do their transactions. And once they're done, they're going to leave. I had to, I had to adjust to that. I had to adjust to personal space. Here in the Philippines, there's no such thing as personal space. <laughs> <And staring. laughs> no personal space, meaning 
your neighbors or you live on top of your neighbors, your neighbors live on top of you. You're at the you're at the the grocery store and you're in line to get checked out. There's somebody give her to Ati. And no, she wanna be on camera. Put her on camera. Tell her, let her say hello. That baby is she's she's she, just going she crazy. Wants, she's grumpy. She wanna be on camera. What? She wanna go to daddy. Look at it, look at it, look at it. <laughs> okay. Are you better now? All that noise you making? So yeah, personal space was something I had to I had to, I had to adjust to as well, because in the US personal space is important to Americans. We we love our personal space. We don't crowd we don't crowd each other at the ATM machine. We don't crowd each other standing in lines to get checked out. But here, you know, personal space is something that you're not gonna find um, here. The Filipinos don't really care about a whole lot. Not all, but the most the most Filipinos I deal with don't, especially in the province. There's no such thing as personal space. Province, you know, they're gonna be right. Talking they're gonna be right. Province. I brought. Yeah. I was dating a girl, and her family came here. And we had all this space, and they wanted to sleep in one room, all ten of them. And they, I said, "Why don't oh, yeah. you spread out?" It's like, yeah. hey, it, that's the Philippines. But hey, Tom, that's... it's been great talking to you. We have yes, to sir. get together, and as soon as I get my ugly stick from the, from Milwaukee, where the president is right now, where we're going to be president. We'll talk about hooking up and uh, if we can work on together on something technology wise, we can do that yeah. too. I want to thank you for coming on. Thank you, Rose, for putting, coming on camera. I'm loving that food. Um, keep it up, okay? Appreciate it, All Charles. Right. No problem. Thank you, Thomas. You thank you, Rose. Care. Okay. Right. Bye bye.